Hello everyone, it's Lucas Strosky here from Sigworld today. We're here with the Total Tools team to talk about a couple of our new game-changing products. These are the new Cut Skill, Sigworld Cut Skill Plasma Cutting Range. We have the Sigworld Cut Skill 35, the 35 amp plasma cutter, and the Sigworld Cut Skill 45, the 45 amp plasma cutter. Now, differences between these two units from a specifications perspective, the Cut Skill 35 is gonna plug into your standard 10 amp power point anywhere in the house, really, really easy. So perfect for your DIY plasma cutting. It's gonna cut through 12 mil mild steel cleanly. So what that means is you're moving through about 10 inches per minute of really, really clean cut on mild steel. It's also fantastic for stainless steel uh, and also aluminum cutting as well. Both units are. The difference in the, the specifications for the, the 45 amp unit is that this will actually get through 16 mil mild steel 10 inches per minute, very, very clean cut. So this is if you've got a bit more heavier stuff that you need to get to, uh, get through, I should say. Again, fantastic on stainless and aluminium as well. Um, with this unit, as opposed to your 35 amp unit, you're gonna need a 15 amp power outlet for this to get this in, which not everyone has. So bear that in mind when you're deciding out of the two units in terms of which one's best for you. Um, what the units come with when you op open your box, You'll get the power source itself. Uh, you'll also get a work clamp, which you can see that we've plugged in. Also plugged in here with the European connection uh, is a 60 amp plasma torch. Now this torch is actually the same torch for both units. The only difference is uh, the cutting tip is different. So with every torch, uh, when we're plasma cutting or you know welding, etc., you're gonna have a set of consumables. And as they wear out, you're gonna need to buy new ones Let's have a look at the front here. One of the things you'll notice compared to a lot of us, other manual plasma cutters on the market is that there's significantly less dials and adjustments that need to be made. And that's what really differentiates these cut skill units from everything else on the market that you're gonna find. They're so simple to use. So you're gonna see this screen here on both units. Let's turn this thing on and show you, you know, exactly what we're talking about because this is really exciting. So power on at the back. So we've got the 35 and we've powered up the 45, okay? So I've just got this unit home. I've plugged in, I've got my nitto fitting in on the back with the, with the Teflon tape that we spoke about. We've got the air connected to it. I've connected it to a 15 amp power outlet. I've connected my work clamp. Now when I start cutting, I'm gonna need to connect that to my workpiece, okay? My torch is, is in there nice and firmly. This is the screen you're gonna see once the unit's fired up. All the details while you're cutting are on the screen. Very, very simple. So what can we see here? 45 amp. So that's basically saying that the amperage of the unit is at 45 amps, which is the maximum you can cut with. If I want to adjust that, just this dial does the does a lot. You can see as I'm turning it in an anti-clockwise motion, my amperage is decreasing. So if you're thinking, Okay, this cuts 16 millimeters of mild steel very, very cleanly, but I don't want to cut 16 millimeters. I only want to cut a piece of formula plate or a piece of really, really thin aluminium. You might not need 45 amps. Save you my power, save you money, and just decrease that slightly. Or alternatively, you can leave it at 45 amps, that's fine, and not even need to worry about that. So, what else can we see here? We can see 2T we can see a picture of a grid there, and we can see some air. So in order to understand how we've come up with those numbers there, we press the button once, and that really goes to, okay, where we can make our adjustments to change what we've seen on, see on the screen. So firstly, that we spoke about 2T. And what 2T means is when you're cutting, 2T just means, okay, if I want to cut, I've got to, I've got to hold that trigger down. So it really represents manual. It means manual cutting. The alternative is switching between 2T and 4T. And what 4T means is once you press that trigger on, it'll actually stay on. And 4T is, it's really, really handy if you just, okay, I'm just going to do a straight piece of plate. It's just reducing user fatigue in that index finger. Um, really, really simple. But if you're using a lot of on and off cutting, then stick with 2T. The majority of the time, you're gonna use 2T. So, 
we're switching to 2D, that's for us. What's the next option? So you're moving across and you can see an image of the grid there. So let's press on that. And if you toggle across here, back and forth, you're seeing two images there. This is the image that the majority of people are going to use. This is a flat piece of plate, as you can see in the image there. So that's basically saying it's a flat plate, not unlike you know what we're doing the, um, the video on today, flat piece of steel. The alternative is this grid here. And what the grid means is basically, if you just, just say you're cutting, um, say some corrugated iron, or something that's got some gaps in it. What that means is that as you're cutting across, your arc isn't gonna cut out each time. It's gonna stay on. So if this is, say, my grid, I establish my arc, cuts across the first section of, of, uh, of steel, and then there's a gap, the, the arc will stay engaged, and then it will cut on the second section of, of steel, the arc stays engaged. Whereas if it's on 2T, it's basically cutting across a flat piece of plate, as so. So there's the option 2T. Today I just want to do standard plate. So, press it in to select the standard plate. Another thing to do every now and again is remembering about the air that we spoke about that comes through from the compressor is what we call a purge. And that's basically purging the line uh, with, with the air. So if it's got any stale air, there's been a build up of moisture. Press that on, purging the air. If you haven't used a unit for a week or so, it's a good, good idea to just do a bit of a purge, just for 20, 30 seconds, whenever you turn the unit on. Now, with this screen, you will see that amperage occasionally change from 45 up one or two amps. Don't worry about that. That's basically very, very normal for your manual plasma cutter. When you are cutting, it will go up every now and again one or two amps. Again, no issue. Now, these units from a consumables perspective, you'll start with your standoff cutting guide. We'd always advise, you know, if you're cutting, always use a standoff cutting guide. It just makes things a hell of a lot easier because you don't, you know, if you're not using this unit, in terms of touching the, you know, the work plate, etc., can somehow damage, or sometimes I should say, damage your consumable. So always try and use a standoff cutting guide. So first consumable, also there's a shield cup as well. Uh, in there you can see the cutting tip. Now, that is the only consumable that's different for the two units. The cutting tip on the 35 amp is a slightly smaller uh, cutting orifice, um, or cutting hole orifice, than the 45 amp. Other than that, all the consumables are the same for, for both units, okay? So bear that in mind when you're going back to the store to, to purchase some more. So you've got your cutting tip inside. Let's open this up so I can show you better while we talk about it. So I'm unscrewing the shield cut here. So there's your cutting tip. There's your electrode as well. The electrode again is going to be the same for both, both units. You've got your gas diffuser that just sits on. If you look right up closely, you can see a small O-ring on there as well. So that things like the O-ring, the gas diffuser, very rare that you'll need to replace those. Things that you're going to move through a little more frequently are going to be things like your electrode, your cutting tip, and your shield cup as well. The other great thing about these units, they have actually some, some warning signs that come up on the unit when you're actually cutting. If, say, your shield cup isn't screwed on properly, or if, say, your torch isn't screwed in properly, the machine won't actually cut. And it's not like you'll be thinking, geez, why is my machine stopped cutting? It's actually gonna tell you on the screen. It's gonna say torch installation error or shield cup installation error. So it's really, really useful. You don't need to refer to your manual. It's very, um, very explanatory. You know, how, how, you know, what's wrong with the unit and what you need to do to get cutting again. So I need to screw in my shield cup again or attach the torch or something along those lines. So this is where your air is going to connect. Now, this little outlet here, out, outlet here I should say, this little window fitting, um, this isn't going to come screwed in. So what we advise is if that is the fitting that you need for your air setup at home to connect to your compressor, and it's most probably going to be in about 8 out of 10 examples, or 8 out of 10 times I should say, is once you get your fitting, just wrap a little bit of Teflon tape around it before screwing it into the unit at the back. And what that does is it really creates a really airtight um, seal there as well, so you're not going to hear any hissing, and your unit's going to receive uh, the full benefit of, of whatever your compressor is pumping into it. In terms of what sort of compressor you need, you need something that delivers about 110 psi. Okay, really, really, uh, it, it's not like you need top of the range compressor to deliver that sort of that sort of pressure. 
Um, so 110 PSI for both units, it's really gonna you know, go well with these. In terms of, uh, a lot of people might say, well where's the regulator at the back of the unit as well so I can adjust the air that's coming you know, through the other end. Don't even worry about it, the regulator's internal in both units. So again, really fantastic DIY units. Um, you might see as well, down here, we've got a little water catchment device. And what that's gonna be for is, when urea is coming in from your compressor, a lot of the times there can be a moisture buildup from that compressor as it, you know, before it comes into the unit itself. Now this actually catches a lot of that water and it's got a little valve here underneath where if you just move that thing upwards like that, that little valve, that water will eject down below. Both units come with this handy little shifter and that can actually get underneath that water catchment device a few turns and you'll be able to take that off, clean it out if need be. Um, in terms of showing you how these connect, we'll do that very briefly. And just a few turns to tighten it up. And on your clamp, and we're ready to go. You connect your rear and you're sorted. Then it's power on and you're ready to cut. Total Tools, low prices on every tool for every trade, guaranteed. Wake up, baby.